The Toronto Blue Jays are trying to capture some of that 2015 magic, and they're trying to do it by making an interesting move. So we'll break that down on this episode of Jays Digest, as well as some not-so-good news uh, on the injury front. So stay tuned for what's coming up next. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Brionis, alongside host Nick Goss. And the Jays won again. That's five in a row now after that debacle in the Texas Rangers series. And they're starting to get hot at the right time. This is back-to-back dominant wins against the New York Yankees. Now, I know it's the Yankees. I know that they're not the mighty Yankees of old. They're not those Yankees that gave AL East opponents problems like they did in the past. But still, you go in the Bronx and you manhandle New York like that. It's a pretty big deal, and this Blue Jay team, even without some key components in their lineup, are starting to hit a little bit better. They're starting to get some more traffic on the bases, and they just look better. They, they look more playoff ready than they did in that Texas series, and it's super exciting. They made a move today, Nick. Uh, we got some injury updates as well, some some positive news on that front as well. So uh, the things are starting to roll in the right direction here, and it's been a good past five days here. Yeah, they're looking for a sweep tomorrow against Garrett Cole. So it was very important that we won the game today, along with you know the Rangers, Mariners, all winning, and, of course, the Astros as well. Before we get to that, make sure to hit the subscribe button. We're on the road to 8,300. And like you said in the intro, the Jays make an interesting move and kind of you know thrown back to a similar you know player of, of Dalton Pompey back in 2015. And I'll just pop up the move here. So, you know, it's interesting that they sent down Ernie Clement, the DFA'd Mason McCoy, which was, if you remember, he's been called up earlier in the year. He was the guy who got back in the Trent Thornton trade. But Cam Eden has been selected to the Major League roster and was active for tonight's game. He obviously didn't get in tonight's game, but this is a guy that I was actually keeping a bit of tabs on earlier in the year during the minor leagues. And Peter, his hitting stats, which I'll show you in a second, are not there whatsoever. However, he has a very, very strict role, and we'll discuss this, and they discussed it in the broadcast as well. Um, one of the organization's best runners. He stole 53 bases this season in AAA and is a phenomenal mm-hmm. defensive first outfielder. He can play center field. And Buck Martinez and Dan Schoen were talking about essentially maybe you know later in the games, if you want to pinch hit and a lefty comes in, pinch hit for Kiermaier, you can put Eden then in center field and have similar, obviously not as good as Kiermaier, but similar defensive levels while keeping Brasho in. So Ernie Clement was completely log jam with the way that Kevin Biggio and Espinal has been hitting as of late as well. And of course, Boba Shett's back. So Having a guy in Cam Eaton who's a faster runner than Ernie Clement, a better defender, uh, obviously in the outfield than Ernie Clement, it, it makes all the sense in the world, and he is playoff eligible. Yeah, this is a very strategic move that the Blue Jays are making, and it's not like they're calling up one of their top prospects, Alan Roden, uh, for hitting. You know, this is this is Cam Eaton, a guy who's probably not going to be a, a big time major leaguer, but. It's, 53 stolen bases is 53 stolen bases. I don't care what rules you're playing with. That's impressive. And uh, that was second best in all of AAA. So he's a big time runner. He's got elite sprint speed. I don't know how much he's going to play in the field. I don't even think he'll get an at bat unless the Blue Jays are up 20 to one or unless they're down 20 to one. But that's not what he's here for. He's here to run. He's here to be a road runner on those bases. And I said trying to capture that 2015 magic. Dalton Pompey was on that team, and and you we remember very well in those playoff runs, Nick, that he stole bases. He, he would come in a pinch run. He would steal third. He would come in uh, steal second. He was just an electric base runner and someone that kind of uh, galvanized the whole team, someone that would inject some life into the whole team when they needed it, and hopefully uh, Cam Eden can be that type of spark plug for this team. Yeah, and looking at his stats here, and again, I don't know, we talked about it off camera. You, you look at the OPS. If you're not familiar with this guy and you wonder why the Jays, you know, demoted Ernie Clement, who had a, you know, an 855 or so OPS, a one war. He was doing phenomenal. Again, 53 stolen bases. And he, he doesn't hit mm-hmm. the ball very, very well whatsoever. Um, he did hit really good in the four games in A-ball. And honestly, he hit very good up until AAA. But again, he's not there for the bat. He will not get an at-bat. Uh, I, I highly doubt it, at least over the next week or so, unless it's a huge blowout game. But he's going to get into pinch run. He's going to get in. And in the playoffs, you need a guy who can strictly pinch run, especially when you have 
you know, Alejandro Kirk on the team, not to pick on him in particular, but he's a guy that if he gets on base and you're most likely going to pinch run for him, if it's any sort of clutch scenario, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. as well, who is what we'll get into in a minute is dealing with some injuries. Maybe he'll be more of a DH going forward, depending how severe that is with pinch running. And it makes all the sense in the world. And again, like I said earlier, our two best outfield defenders are left-handed hitters. So if there is later in the game, when you have to pinch hit a righty, now you have an elite outfielder that can, you know, swap in, which is something we didn't have before because as you know, decent as what Merrifield has been, he is really not that great of an outfielder in left field compared to Dalton Varsho or even, you know, Cam Eden in this case. So it makes all the sense in the world, and I'm pretty happy that they made this move. I didn't think about it um, just because of how good Ernie Clement was hitting, but, you know, Espinal is playing fine. He's a fine backup shortstop, and Biggio is playing unbelievable. I mean, you don't really think about it because you have a lot of good base runners on the team as well. And and not many guys need to be ran for. Obviously, you have Alejandro Kirk. But right now, as he's the only catcher on the team, basically, you don't really want to have to use a pinch runner. You don't want to have to take him out of the game unless it's seventh, eighth, or ninth inning. And he is the tying run or the go-ahead run. And as we've seen in, in a couple of games here in the past, Nick, Tyler Heineman has just been coming in to run for Alejandro Kirk. Now, obviously, he's faster than Alejandro Kirk. I, I think some of our viewers may be faster than Alejandro Kirk. It doesn't even matter how old you are. But uh, it, that's just the kind of scenario that we've been in right now. Tyler Heineman has been the guy that comes in and runs, and then he takes over a catcher. But now if you have a guy whose defined role is to be that pinch runner, to be that designated runner that that you use later on in the games like Cam Eden is going to be for this Blue Jay team. It it doesn't, you know, you don't have to send Tyler Heineman out there. You could have a, a legitimate base runner. You could have a guy who's a threat to steal a base on any pitch. So it's a big time wrinkle for this team, but it leads me to believe that someone might not make the postseason roster that we may have believed uh, that they would. Uh, and I'm talking about Espinal. I'm talking about maybe someone else that uh, was probably a lock a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, it's gonna be very, very interesting. And again, if you don't, if you don't, you know, take Espinal, then who's our backup shortstop? That maybe that's why Biggio has been getting some reps there, and he's gonna find his way into the lineup. But one mm -hmm. quick thing on that, um, as well as that, you know. Thinking back to 2015 with Dalton Pompey in the you know playoffs, Eden would be a guy that I'm just super excited about, and it's something that I think going forward will be very, very important. And again, more of a defensive replacement. I think I agree with you on that. But like you said, Tyler Heineman, not a very fast runner, but he is faster than Kirk. So having Eden to be able to go in there is very, very good. But moving on now to some you know bit of a scary update, which also might have to do with Cam Eden to a degree. Like I mentioned, there is uh, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. He's looking like he's going to be uh, out maybe for a little bit. We're completely unsure right now, but Vladimir Guerrero Jr. was scratched from yesterday's you know, lineup. Um, he was going to get an MRI, MRI on his right knee uh, last night, and we'll know more by today as the time of recording. But as the time this video is uploaded, we're not 100% sure yet. So if uh, you know the news comes out, let us know in the comments. Peter, I was a bit nervous when he got uh, you know scratched, and the reason is because his knee is bothering him a bit. He's clarified that it's not the patella or anything structural, just soreness, and he's at DH today, and that will be an option to manage it while keeping him in the lineup. Any thoughts on this? It's a little bit scary if you're a Jays fan because this, you know, he's starting to see the ball a little bit better up, with, you know, until last game where he's shown some wear and tear there. But I don't know. I'm a little bit worried, and this would be a horrible time for him to get hurt, as you know, as many you know Jays fans have been happy with this hitting. He's still one of our best hitters. I'm I'm not uh, very worried about it. I think it was just precaution to take him out of the lineup today because uh, the Jays were fairly confident that they should go out there and win this game. They're playing an inferior opponent. Uh, they ultimately did end up winning the game, even though um, the starter, uh, Michael King, for the New York Yankees looked unbelievable in those seven innings. But we also got to mention that the, the strike zone was the size of... Uh, a, of my refrigerator that is on my right hand side and it was ridiculous i mean i could have probably got eight strikeouts in this game uh just by throwing pitch outs you know so i think it was a good game to give light of the day off he might have been a little bit frustrated if he had some of those calls go against him so i guess you could take that as a silver lining here i do expect him to be back in the lineup tomorrow because he does hit garrett cole really well and you'll probably go ahead and get that chance to do so so i, I don't think it's anything serious uh, they're obviously going to do some more tests and we're going to know a bit more in the in the coming days. But yeah, I, I think this was precautionary. He was penciled in the lineup today, so I wouldn't read too much into it. And uh, 
I don't think I don't think it's anything major here, Nick. Yeah, I don't think so either. It is still though a, a little bit scary that everyone sees the you know the MRI word and, and gets right. scary. But again, it should just be a cautionary. Although it is quite scary. And one final quick thing before we wrap up here is uh, Brandon Belt. This was as of a couple days ago, but I figured it was yeah uh, yeah I was figuring you know may as well throw it in here. Brandon Belt's beginning a hitting progression today, which was a couple days ago per the Blue Jays manager John Schneider. In an ideal world, he get his rehab at bats in Buffalo, but with only a week left. Now this is kind of weird because who knows if, if Brandon Belt that might be a guy guy who doesn't get you know on the playoff roster if he's not healthy enough because you know the you know the spots are limited and Brandon Belt is a guy that realistically was our second best hitter aside from Boba Shed on the year and a much smaller sample size than him obviously and he's a left-handed bat that I'm, I'm missing out there any you know quick thoughts on on this but I'm hoping that he's back and gets a couple of at-bats in one of the Tampa you know series before the season ends yeah, well, if he's ready to go, you got to put him on the roster. I, I mean, it's unfortunate that he hasn't been able to get his timing down. In the one game that he did come back, that he made a brief uh, appearance in, he just didn't look right. And you could tell. He looked like the April Brandon Belt that all Blue yeah. Jay fans wanted to be DFA'd. And, and you could tell that that was just not himself right there. He, his back was obviously there was something more there and then the blue jays had to il him he wasn't on the injured list before you came back there the first time but then the blue jays saw something even worse so who knows how far away he is hopefully he can progress a little bit more as the days go along and obviously not many games left in buffalo either for him to go and find that rhythm but it's someone that the jays need as great as kevin biggio has been playing i don't want him bad in cleanup I don't want him starting at first base and batting fourth in the playoffs. I just don't think that's uh, that's something that's sustainable. I don't think that's a recipe for success. They need Brandon Belt back as soon as possible. Spencer Horwitz got a big hit today, but I don't want him starting at first base every day either. So they they got to go ahead and get him back. They got to get him healthy. They got to do whatever they can to get him in that lineup because I don't know how long of a postseason run they'll be able to go on without their second best hitter. Yeah, no, I agree. And yeah. Uh... I like Kevin Biggio maybe starting at second base in the playoffs against right-handed pitching. But uh, quickly before we mm -hmm. wrap up, shout out to the umpire. You can you know pause the and zoom in here. Had to throw this call in on Kevin Kiermaier. <laughs> it, one of the worst calls I've ever seen, and uh, Pitching Ninja agreed. So air it out in the comments if you uh, agree with us that it was the worst umpire game I've seen this year, and we've seen a lot of bad ones. But Aaron Boone got ejected, and uh, that'll make for a, a fun John Boy video. But thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys in tomorrow's video, and hopefully the Jays can sweep the Yankees.